Hey, I'm Dana in my brand new kitchen that I built, and today we are gonna make brownies to celebrate. Not just any old brownies. Brownies that are so chocolatey, so chewy, so crinkly on the top, you can't just eat one. Hold up, you built a kitchen? Yeah, I did. And hype me up in the comments because it was a labor of love, and I'm so thrilled to share it with you guys. And this is my sous chef, Wiz. Sous chef? I'm just here for the brownies. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's perfect. Let's turn that craving for brownies into a reality. Let's get to baking. First things first, let's gather everything we'll need. Looks like we're gonna need 13 ingredients. 13? This is already starting off bad. Are you superstitious about that number, Wiz? Well, don't forget the number one ingredient that we'll need, you. You at home are the special ingredient that makes my channel as sweet as these brownies. So make sure you subscribe because we need our lucky number 14. Subscriptions beat superstitions. Nice. Back to it. Baking's a bit of a science. So understanding the steps and how the ingredients work together helps create consistently delicious treats and boost your confidence in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm basically a scientist now. Okay, Doc Wiz. First, we're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. This sets the perfect stage for our brownies. And to make sure that our brownies slide out super easy, we're gonna grease and line an eight by eight inch baking pan with parchment paper. What are you doing now? Well, you see how the parchment paper keeps popping out of the pan? So if you crumple it into a ball, open it back up, and place it in the pan, it helps the parchment paper mold better to the shape of the pan, making it easier not only for you, but also to fill it with batter later. That's actually a pretty good tip. What's next? Thanks, Wiz. Baking loves precise measurements. I use a food scale for that extra precision. Can't I just stick to my measuring cups? Absolutely. Use what you've got. I just tend to always misplace my measuring cups. I don't know how. All right, everything's measured. What's next? Let's whisk together half cup or 70 grams of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one third cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder, and a half teaspoon of salt in a bowl. This mix ensures an even distribution of flavor and texture throughout your brownies. The flour provides structure, while cocoa powder adds that rich chocolatey taste. And that touch of cornstarch helps create that soft and chewy texture. In another bowl, mix together eight tablespoons or 113 grams of unsalted butter. That's about one stick, five ounces of bittersweet chocolate, one ounce of milk chocolate, and two tablespoons of any type of mild oil. Heat this mix in short 30 second microwave bursts to create a luscious chocolatey base. Why two chocolates? This combo creates a more complex flavor profile. The bittersweet chocolate adds a more deep, rich chocolatey flavor, while the milk chocolate adds sweetness and creaminess. Okay. So now what? To make the brownies light and fluffy, we're gonna whip three large eggs, one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar and a quarter cup packed or 50 grams brown sugar until they become light and frothy. This process is called the ribbon stage. It introduces air for fluffier brownies and dissolves the sugars, creating that crackly crust on top. Yo, that's the best part! Right? <laughs> now, gently add the melted chocolate mixture to the egg sugar mixture and add one teaspoon of vanilla extract for a burst of flavor. Mixing these together ensures a smooth, well-balanced batter. Now, carefully fold in the dry mix, avoiding overmixing because overmixing can lead to a tougher brownie. And of course, the goal here is a soft, and chewy brownie. Now pour your beautiful brownie batter into a pan and bake for 20 minutes. This sets the top of the brownies, creating that classic crisp crust. Mmm, time to lick the bowl. Ooh, that is all you is. I am not a batter person. Wait, for real? Like all batter, even cookie dough? Especially cookie dough. I hate underdone cookies. Weird. What about you guys at home? Am I the only one? Or do you guys like to eat the batter? Comment below. Wait, wait, 
What are you doing? Well, here is the secret to perfect, chewy, and fudgy brownies. As they bake, the edges puff up, leading to a cakey texture. To balance it for that fudgy goodness, halfway through the baking, you're gonna tap the pan on the counter a few times to release any trapped air bubbles. But if you're using glass, maybe use a towel so it doesn't break. <laughs> so now they're ready to eat? Well, not quite yet. We're gonna pop them back in the oven for an additional 15 to 20 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center has a few moist crumbs but no wet batter. This ensures that even baking and those crinkly cracks on top. So, what do we do while they're baking? Well, Wiz, did you know the brownies were a mistake? You're lying. No, for real. Back in 1893, the head chef at the Palmer House Hotel forgot baking powder in her chocolate cake. And boom, brownies were born. I'm not buying it. No, really. The hotel in Chicago still sells the brownies to this day. The OG recipe had like a pound of butter and a pound of chocolate and they topped it all with walnuts and apricot jelly. Nah, sounds like overkill. I want your brownies. <laughs> well, good thing that ours are done then. Finally, let's eat. Ooh, wait, 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 Wiz. Patience is key. We have to wait until they cool completely. Like you didn't just eat a whole row of these. Well, I'm guilty there. <laughs> um, so you're supposed to wait until they cool completely, but I, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> but if you want the cleanest cut for your brownies, use a big knife, cut straight down the center without dragging, and wipe the crumbs off between cuts for a smooth finish. Or you could try spraying a pizza cutter with like nonstick spray and you'll get those easy, neat slices. Wow, those look amazing. Right? I mean, when have I ever let you down? Um, Santa cake last year. What happened? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it, better than box brownies. I hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe and a few little insights. If you give it a go, comment below. And if you didn't like this one, you'll like the next one. And I can't wait to see you guys back here next time to see what we create together. I'm just here for the food. Classic whiz. All right, guys. Bye.